Number 10, the movie premiere. A few months ago, the couple hit the red carpet at the premiere for JLo's movie called The Mother. Jennifer looked amazing on the red carpet as she wore a sparkling sequin covered beige crop top with a matching skirt and blazer. The two of them posed for several pictures together that turned out really great, but a video of that moment told a different story. Right away, you could tell that they were both very upset at something. Jennifer was frowning and making some dramatic gestures to Ben, who also looked angry. At one point, they were locked into a very tense conversation but when their photos were taken, they completely changed their body language. Then all of a sudden they were smiling and happy when the cameras were on them. Of course, they just wanted to get some nice photos, but fans couldn't help but wonder what they were actually discussing. Whatever it was, it seemed to put Ben in a very bad mood. And the crazy thing is, we've seen so many of these awkward moments between them, so this is just the beginning. Number nine, fighting in public. It's become pretty obvious that their marital bliss isn't quite as it seems, because now there's repeated instances of Ben and Jennifer being caught arguing on camera. First incident that occurred was shortly after Jennifer's Today interview, when the couple were filmed having what looked like a tense argument at the premiere for her film Shotgun Wedding. In a clip that quickly went viral on TikTok, JLo appears to taste a bit of Ben's drink and then she looks at him sternly. She seems visibly fed up with her husband as he tries to defend himself and repeatedly says, Jen. He could also be heard yelling over the music saying that he didn't drink anything. It is theorized at the time that Ben is insisting that he has hasn't been drinking alcohol and that she was tasting his drink to check in the video. Ben has been very open about his recovery from alcoholism and the fact that he's been to rehab multiple times over the years, like in 2001, 2017 and 2018. That video has been viewed around 2 million times so far, but surprisingly, most people seem to think that Jennifer is being unsupportive of Ben's struggles. Someone commented, they just seem exhausting. This marriage will never see 18 months. Another person wrote, it just looks like she doesn't trust him. Him. Picked up the drink to taste it. He's clearly upset. And there does seem to be a lot of truth to that. Number 8, the 2023 Grammys. Things seemed awkward between the couple when they were filmed at this year's Grammys. Someone posted a video on Twitter of the two of them sitting together and they wrote, however bad of a day you're having, I promise you, you're not as miserable as Ben Affleck at the Grammys right now. And it's true that whatever he was feeling at that ceremony, he simply looked miserable and like he would rather be anywhere else. Next to him, JLo was clapping happily and a lot more focused on what was going on on stage than how her partner was feeling. As expected, the comments under that video were pretty brutal. Someone wrote, he could be home baking with Jennifer Garner, and instead he's looking around for the emergency exits for a quick getaway. In another awkward video from the event, the couple were captured having an intense argument, but they seemed like they were trying to play it off for the cameras. In the clip, Ben can be seen leaning over to whisper something in Jennifer's ear, only for her to whip her head around and sternly say something to him. She then puts her hand to his chest and appears to tell him to sit up straight as he immediately adjusts his posture. Well, we all saw what happened. Number 7, slamming the car door. It looks like there is even more trouble in Benefit Paradise because a couple recently went viral on social media for, you guessed it, fighting in public. So this time Ben was seen slamming the car door in Jennifer's face while they were running errands in Santa Monica. Video captured of that moment shows him looking upset while he was walking to his car. He's clearly annoyed but he still opens the door for Jennifer so she can get in. In. But once she's inside, he pretty much slams it shut in her face. When that moment was shared on Twitter, everyone started guessing why he was so angry. Was it because they had gotten into an argument or was it something else? One person wrote, maybe he's just irritated because someone is recording him. Another person said, I'm sure he's just annoyed at the people pointing the phones at them while they are trying to do normal stuff. Considering that JLo and Ben are one of the most recognizable couples in the world, there's bound to be paparazzi following them around all day. So it's really no wonder that he feels frustrated frustrated and maybe that's why he's been in such a dark mood recently. Number 6, Cheating Allegations As we know, Ben and Jennifer have had an on again off again romance that's been going on since the 2000s, with fans even nicknaming the couple Benefer. I mean, these two just got married recently after they first got engaged nearly two decades ago. But the timeline of their relationship is a huge red flag because it includes some alleged cheating. So in July of 2002, JLo filed for divorce from her second husband Chris Judd, citing irreconcilable differences. But this news broke just months after she had wrapped up the movie Geely alongside her then boyfriend Ben. Even though she vehemently denied cheating rumors, Ben took out an ad in The Hollywood Reporter and gushed about Jennifer before her divorce was finalized. In fact, even Chris Judd's father, Larry, spoke out against the couple, and he accused JLo of being unfaithful to his son. He insinuated that the affair started during the filming of the movie. Quote, I thought Mr. Affleck would honor a married woman and not just go right into the trailer. He also said that she would be a lot happier 
Olivia if she would just tell the truth and no one in her little circle was going to say one negative thing about her. But I guess we'll never really know the truth about what happened. Number 5 Dissing Jennifer Garner In December of 2021, Ben made some very controversial comments on Howard Stern when he said that he felt trapped during their marriage and that was a part of the reason why he started drinking. When you look at his choice of words, it's easy to see why people thought he was attacking Jennifer Garner. He said, We had a marriage that didn't work. What I did was I drank a bottle of scotch and fell asleep on the couch, which turned out not to be the solution. At the time, Ben said that they made the right decision ending their marriage because they would probably be at each other's throats and he'd probably still be drinking. He since had to clarify those remarks and explain that they were taken out of context. He said, I was trying to say, hey look, I was drinking too much and the less happy you become, whether it's your job, your marriage, it's just that your life becomes more difficult and if you're doing things to fill a hole that aren't healthy, you're going to start doing more of those things. And insisted that his behavior is his own responsibility entirely. But he was also upset by all the backlash that he got. Since that interview with Howard Stern, he says he's become very guarded around what he chooses to say and where he chooses to say it. And apparently that's the reason why he stayed off social media for such a long time. Number 4 She Hates Being Alone Jennifer has admitted more than once that she hates being single, so she tends to fall hard and fast, throwing all of herself into her relationships. In the early 2000s, this was especially evident. Jennifer moved on from Diddy, who allegedly cheated on her numerous times, and almost immediately took up with her backup dancer Chris Judd, who as we know now, she ended up marrying that September, only to ditch him for Ben Affleck in 2002. In 2014, Jennifer did an interview with she finally admitted that she does get scared to be alone. She said, The first person who shows up and gives me a little comfort and we have a little chemistry, boom, we're in. She also said that she is one of those people who does not like to be alone and that she has no shame saying that at this point in her life. Quote, I think we have to own who we are. I always believed in the institution of marriage. Her parents were married for a very long time for 35 years, and she said she does believe in it even though it is difficult. At the end of the interview, JLo says that she's had her challenges, but at the same time, she still believes in love. Though it might be her aversion to being alone that results in her making bad decisions about romance, like settling for partnerships that aren't healthy, or trying to turn flings into full-fledged relationships. Number 3 Jennifer's Past Celebrity gossip magazines could not get enough of JLo's relationship with Mark Anthony in the early 2000s. They were absolutely everywhere and it seemed like fans loved the pairing. But their beginnings as a couple were super questionable to say the least. Anthony married former Miss Universe Dianara Torres in 2000 while JLo was dating Ben Affleck around the same time. But the on again off again couple picked their romance up while Anthony was still married to Dianara. So less than a week after his divorce was finalized, the couple surprised fans by getting married in a small casual ceremony in her Beverly Hills home in early June. And that really begs the question of whether or not JLo was some kind of homewrecker, because the timeline of this rekindled relationship seems really off. I mean, he actually broke Dianera's heart. She said, You go through hell. I cried until there were no tears left until I was numb. I didn't want to eat. I didn't care to get dressed or take a shower. I just wanted to lie there. Anthony's feelings for JLo might have been there all along because the two had history, but they should have put more thought into why he chose to marry marry her in the first place. So in a way, they're both at fault. Number 2 Lying About Their Breakup In September of 2003, Ben and Jen were all set to tie the knot, but the public pressure became too great and they postponed their nuptials. It was reported that they had a meeting just days before they were set to walk down the aisle, because paparazzi began swarming the area of the venue, and important details about their wedding were leaking to the press. Apparently they then told the 400 guests not to show up. The couple released a joint statement shortly after saying, Due to the excessive media attention surrounding our wedding, we have decided to postpone the date. When we found ourselves seriously contemplating hiring three separate decoy brides at three different locations, we realized that something was awry. We began to feel that the spirit of what should have been the happiest day of our lives could be compromised. But later on, an inside source claimed that while the media did play a role in their demise, it wasn't as big of a part as they claimed. Quote, when you love someone, the media circus does not get in the way. Jennifer did didn't realize it at the moment, but when he called the wedding off, the relationship was over. He got out of the trap and wasn't going to get back in. He was looking for a graceful way to let it die. And coming in at number one, way too much criticism. Ben and JLo both agreed that the media scrutiny surrounding their relationship was just too much for them to handle. When speaking about their relationship in 2008, Ben said, I think Jen and I made a mistake in that we fell in love. We were excited, maybe too 
accessible. I don't think either of us anticipated the degree to which it would take on a world of its own. He spoke more about their split in 2012 and described it as running away. I moved on for a while to this place in Georgia that I have and was able to get away by and large. Come up with a plan for how to do something with my life that doesn't put me in the crosshairs of this sort of thing. For her part, JLo explained that they didn't try to have a public relationship, they just happened to be together at the birth of the tabloids, which was a lot of pressure. But she still maintained that there was a genuine love there and in a different time, she said who knows what could have happened. Well now we do, they got married. Number 10 Ex-Girlfriends Warning Taylor Swift recently received a harsh warning from Travis Kelsey's ex-girlfriend, who claimed that he cheated on her years ago and he will most likely do it again. So now it seems like Taylor's new boyfriend from the Kansas City Chiefs has a ton of red flags that she really needs to watch out for. Maya Benberry dated Travis for several months back in 2016 and now she's come out of the woodwork to expose him. She spoke to Daily Mail and straight up said that he was unfaithful to her during their relationship. She even used the phrase once a cheater always a cheater and then she addressed Taylor Swift directly. Quote, Taylor seems like such a fun girl with a beautiful spirit so I wish her the best of luck but I wouldn't be a girl's girl if I didn't advise her to be smart. I'm sure by now she has mastered the ability to see who is really there for her and who is just using her. I can only hope that she comes out the teacher in the situation and not the student. So it sounds like Maya had a really bad experience with Travis and now she's really trying to warn Taylor about getting involved with him as well. Of course he's also denied these accusations and accused Maya of just trying to get her 15 minutes of fame. But it's hard to ignore her comments completely. Number 9 Cheating Accusations As we know Travis is now being called out for cheating. Maya Benberry is the loudest voice when it comes to this accusation. She's the one who dated Travis after winning his e-dating reality series called Catching Kelsey. Soon after they split up she went on to accuse him of cheating on her with sports broadcaster Kayla Nicole. She claimed that there was overlap with their relationship. On Twitter she wrote, when you and your ex broke up 5 months ago but you find out via social media that he's supposedly been in another relationship for 6 months. For his part Travis never spoke publicly about the claims made by Maya. He only said that it was fake news. Though he also faced allegations of infidelity during his breakup with Kayla Nicole in 2020. They finally called it quits in May of 2022 and then rumours swirled that it was financially driven, with the two time Super Bowl winner keen to go 50-50 with Nicole. However that was denied by both of them who have since removed each other from their socials. Obviously no one knows for sure what really happened between them but whatever it was, the breakup sounded like it was a pretty big deal at the time. Number 8 Kayla Nicole Drama So Travis's other ex-girlfriend sports presenter Kayla has received some major backlash ever since Taylor and Travis got together. It got so bad that she had to address being trolled online in her very own video statement that she posted on Instagram. So it's incredibly upsetting that toxic fans are now going after her simply for the fact that she used to date Travis. Nicole's followers called out Swifties who for some reason were pitting the two women against each other and leaving immature and unnecessary comments including photos of Taylor Swift under her Instagram posts. Nicole has since responded in a 4 minute long video addressed to black women. She said they may call you a traitor for falling in love. You'll hope the ones closest to you will protect you but you will quickly find out that people don't protect what they don't value. They'll say you're too much, too provocative, too boisterous, too outspoken and in the same breath tell you that you're not enough. She urged women not to participate in this kind of one sided journey and asked them to preserve their heart even when they try to quantify your character because there is power in silence. Number 7 Accusations of Narcissism As we know Maya did not mince her words when she was asked to weigh in on Travis's and Taylor's relationship. In a recent interview with Inside Edition she said her experience dating Travis led her to view him as a narcissist and she doubted the authenticity of his relationship with Taylor. Maya went on to cite his willingness to discuss Taylor publicly as a main reason she questions the genuineness of their connection. The life coach also said that she's been on the receiving end of negative messages sent by Swifties and in an interesting turn of events she straight up said Swifties are aggressive, very negative, very hypocritical. It's really crazy to me that someone I think is positive and very nice has such a negative and angry fan base. She added that she does not know Taylor personally but is a fan of her music. Quote, I'm not jealous about Taylor, she is beautiful, she is successful, we're in two different lanes. My issue is more with Travis. So there you have it, if that's not a warning sign I really don't know what is. Number 6 The Dating Show Back in 2016 Travis was being pursued on the e-reality dating series called Catching Kelsey. When describing the show he said it was kind of like The Bachelor except instead of roses he handed out footballs and instead of watching people did not. So clearly Travis 
Travis has been trying to make a joke out of the whole thing. He said, that show is owned by NBC Universal, so it should be on Peacock. But Peacock said, nah, we're good. So you might be wondering, how did he get his own dating show in the first place? Well, despite a five year, $46 million contract extension with the Chiefs, Travis said that in those days, he was actually strapped for cash. He said that there were times in the off season that he was avoiding the rent lady. It was that bad. So he finally gave in and heard about the situation where he could make six figures in just two weeks. And of course, when he heard about the 50 ladies involved, he was a lot more interested. Similar to Love is Blind or Too Hot to Handle, the idea behind Catching Kelsey is that 50 women, one from each state, will compete for his affections. But unlike on The Bachelor, the winner can't expect an engagement and they don't even get to win a cash prize. They'll only get the treasured title of being Travis Kelsey's first girlfriend in the NFL. Apparently, Travis turned down the show about a hundred times, but eventually that amount of money would start to look good for anyone. Number five, Taylor's need for privacy. One of the main reasons Swifties are so concerned about her latest relationship is because of how public it is. In comparison for her longest romance with Joe Alwyn, the couple hardly ever came into the spotlight. And Taylor herself spoke out many, many times about the importance of keeping her love life private in order to protect it. Over the years, they've had to deal with countless rumors that they secretly got engaged or married on the down low. The speculation reached new heights when Taylor was seen with a large ring on her finger in the documentary Miss Americana. With the release of Lover in 2019, this theory was absolutely everywhere. Joe eventually spoke out about it in an interview and he said, if I had a pound for every time I think I've been told I'm engaged, then I'll have a lot of pound coins. I mean, the truth is, if the answer was yes, I wouldn't say. If the answer was no, I still wouldn't say. For her part, Taylor addresses speculation in her song Lavender Haze. She said, because we live in the era of social media, if the world finds out you're in love with somebody, they're going to weigh in on it. She explained that she and Joe have had to dodge weird rumors, tabloid stuff, and they just ignore it. So Lavender Haze is all about the act of ignoring that stuff to try to protect the real thing. Number four, Taylor's past relationships. Unlike Joe Alwyn, Maddie Healy never shied away from discussing his relationship with Taylor, even if it was a bit controversial. Two years after meeting her, he responded to rumors that they had a relationship in a very interesting interview with Q Magazine. He described what happened between them as just a flirtation and said he was surprised that it made the headlines. He said, it's not really anything to talk about because if she wasn't Taylor Swift, we wouldn't be talking about her. He said, she wasn't a big impact on my life. It's just interesting to me how interested the world is about Taylor Swift. He then explains that if he had gone out with her, then he would have been labeled as just Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Maddie made it pretty clear that he absolutely hated that idea and said that it would have been very emasculating to be in a relationship with her, given her level of success. At the time, his comments received a lot of backlash for being misogynistic. He later ended up backpedaling with a post on Twitter, insisting that she was one of the most gracious, hardworking, creatively gifted, and beautiful women that he had ever met. Thankfully, his comments didn't seem to affect their relationship too much. Number three, growing backlash. The backlash surrounding the couple has gotten so bad recently that the NFL released a statement defending their coverage of Taylor. They said, we frequently change our bios and profile imagery based on what is happening in and around our games, as well as culturally. The Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey news has been a pop cultural moment that we've leaned into in real time, as it's an intersection of sport and entertainment. And we've seen an incredible amount of positivity around the sport. But clearly the fact that they even needed to put a statement out there in the first place just shows you that they've received a whole lot of pushback. Only two weeks ago, Taylor got booed by thousands of people at an NFL game. When the Giants and the Seahawks were playing at MetLife Stadium, a ton of NFL fans decided to make it clear that they do not like her. While she wasn't even physically present at the game, she still somehow managed to get booed when an ad for her Eras tour popped up on the scoreboard. Then thousands of people in the crowd just started booing as the image of her was shown on the big screen. Never mind the fact that it was just an ad. Number two, celebrity criticism. Olivia Wilde had people wondering what exactly she has against Taylor Swift after she weighed in on her romance with Travis Kelsey. On her Instagram story, she posted someone else's tweet that said, I wish Taylor Swift was in love with a climate scientist and obviously not the NFL star. Judging from that post, it's pretty obvious Olivia was alluding to reports of Taylor's significant carbon footprint. Last year, she was named one of the celebrities with the worst private jet CO2 emissions. Based on data from Celebrity Jet's account, they found that her jet had made 170 trips between January and July of 2022, creating an estimated 8,000 metric tons of CO2. Her team then defended the numbers and told Rolling Stone that her jet is loaned out regularly to other individuals. So to attribute these trips to her is blatantly incorrect. But even so, fans were not happy. One viral tweet said, Taylor Swift saying she wants to run away 
to the lakes, live out the rest of her life surrounded by nature, and then being responsible for 8,000 tons of carbon emissions is so unserious. And now people are once again talking about her jet controversy, there's also been a new theory that's been spreading across the internet. Which I won't explain now, but go look it up if you're interested because it's kind of crazy. And coming in at number one, how they met. Talk of their romance first started when Travis revealed on his podcast that he tried to get Taylor's attention at her Casey concert with a friendship bracelet that had his phone number on it. Unfortunately, Taylor had left the stadium before he could get it to her, but she found out about it after that conversation went public. As speculation started to grow, his brother Jason stoked the flames further during an interview, where he called the dating rumors 100% true, and he said that they're doing great together. Eventually, Travis addressed the rumors in his own interview, and he said, I threw it out there, I threw the ball in her court. Clearly, that did the job because just a few weeks later, Taylor was seen getting into the game as the Kansas City Chiefs battled the Chicago Bears. She was enthusiastically cheering him on in the VIP section right next to his mother Donna. She was wearing all red and white to show her support for the team and looked like she was just having a blast watching the game. The two of them then left the stadium together in Travis's vintage convertible and spent time together at a private after party in Kansas City. At the time, there were said to be several eyewitnesses who saw them kissing and cuddling throughout the evening. So at this point, they're not even hiding the fact that they're full on together. At number 10, we have 45 days of crying. Jada has a Facebook talk show called Red Table Talk, where she is joined by her daughter Willow and her mother Adrian as they invite guests to talk about difficult topics. This particular guest was the one and only Will Smith, as they discussed low points of their marriage. They revealed there was a time in their marriage where Jada actually would wake up and cry. She cried for 45 days straight, which is honestly a little relatable. Will believed he failed as a husband during this time because from the outside everything appeared to be perfect, but in reality it was the worst Will felt during their marriage. In fact, he began realizing what mistakes he had made as he stated, I built the house and called the house her lake and during that time I remember saying, I built this house for you. And she said, you built this house for you. He further explained how he told himself he was building it for Jada before admitting it wasn't in fact. In fact, he elaborated that he called it her lake as a cover for his ego because in reality he was building his own dream which was a complete opposite from his childhood. And if you're wondering how we know it's 45 days, that's because that specific number was told by Will, who told his daughter that he kept track of all of this in a diary. At number nine, we have entanglement. Back in 2020, singer Austin Alsina revealed in an interview that he was actually romantically involved with Jada and even added that he had received Will's blessings. At first, Jada denied these claims but eventually admitted they were true. Their relationship apparently happened while the couple was separated but this didn't stop anyone from criticizing Jada because she noted this entanglement occurred just so she could feel good before adding it was a way to heal. Although August admitted he didn't watch Jada explain her side on her talk show, he did see a few clips online and people he knew would talk to him about it. But he did add that the word entanglement was a good word to describe their relationship because it was complex and difficult. However, in July of 2020, August released a track titled Entanglement and of course it detailed information about his relationship with Jada with some detailed lyrics that I'll leave up to you if you want to learn more. August and Jada actually met because he was a friend of her kids which which is interesting, but I'll let you decide your thoughts on this. And for number eight, we have sharing too much. Jada's talk show has tackled topics that aren't always easy to talk about, especially when it surrounds someone's personal experience. One guest she often has was Will, and the two have spilt so much information about their relationship that some may find it unnecessary. One of these people who have voiced their opinions was Nick Cannon. In fact, he shared his joy when the show was canceled by Facebook earlier this year. Cannon actually claims if there was no red table talk, Will wouldn't have slapped Chris Rock during the infant miss Oscar's moment. He believes Will had such a heated reaction because Will and Jada bring all the relationship issues literally to the table before adding he doesn't need to know all of this about them and to keep it to themselves and refer to the show as toxic table. I mean they do air out all their private information about their lives that some just don't think they really need to know. For number seven we have Jada's real soulmate, Tupac Shakur who was a popular rapper who unfortunately passed away in 1997 
1996 was apparently Jada's soulmate. In an interview with Rolling Out, she discussed how there's actually no chemistry between her and the rapper, but they have a friendship, a love chemistry, and apparently a future together wasn't the purpose. She believed God made them that way, a way where they were able to be a dynamic duo. He was her peanut butter to his jelly, the ketchup to her mustard, the ice to her spice. Somebody check on Will because if my partner for 20 plus years told me someone else was their soulmate, I think I'd cry a little. Maybe even 45 days straight. Jada said in an interview that their friendship had ups and downs, but they both had deep love for one another that lasted until Tupac unfortunately passed away. Although they were not speaking at the time of his passing, she said the rapper knew how much she loved him. And for number six, we have Jada not loving Will. For years now, fans have spoken about how they felt bad for Will because it appears Jada doesn't share the same love for him that he gives to her. Although this is just speculation, the couple revealed they were in an open relationship at one point Point. While discussing this, Will was pictured tearing up and this photo has become a viral meme. Fans also noticed that Jada goes after other men and then says it's for her healing, which some believe to be unfair for Will. But of course, their relationship has different boundaries just like everybody else, so the only people that know the truth is the two of them. And for number 5, we have another cheating scandal. This former couple does not shy away from cheating scandals as it seems they get involved in the conversation very often. In one of these incidents, Will was rumored to be cheating on Jada with Margot Robbie. And these rumors started when the two actors began filming Focus in 2013. Star Magazine further added to this whole conversation by reporting a photo showing Will and Margot in a photo booth with suggestive actions. But Margot did address this whole situation publicly in 2015 on Twitter by saying that these claims were false and blown out of proportion. She was disappointed that their onset goofing around was taken out of context and even later said she would no longer be dating any actor Actors because it adds unnecessary stress to her life. In fact, the number of times Will and Jada have publicly addressed they were together now seems a little suspicious because it was revealed they split in 2016. For number four, we have the 2022 Oscars. There was just no way I wouldn't include this moment because it had so many people talking about it. And if you somehow were able to escape this news, during the Oscar ceremony in 2022, Chris Rock made a joke about Jada and her hair loss while on stage. Will appeared to be laughing along before noticing Jada looked unimpressed, which many believed prompted him to go on stage and actually slap Chris Rock right across his face. I hope Chris's face is as sturdy as a rock. Okay, that was a bad joke. I'll keep a lookout for Will and his hand. But anyways, Will apologized after this event, but Jada actually talked about what happened in her memoir that's set to be released in just a few days. She detailed how she actually thought the whole scene was a skit because there was no way Will would actually slap Chris. But he did, and she realized it wasn't a skit when Will began returning to his seat and ultimately was banned from attending Academy Awards for the next 10 years. For number three, we have lack of connection. This couple has been together for years. In fact, many knew them for being one of Hollywood's longest lasting couples. But during an episode of Red Table Talk, Jada revealed details about her and Will. She discussed the pandemic and how during this time in 2020, she realized she actually doesn't know Will at all and she believes he doesn't know her at all either. Jada said it was challenging because she was forced to look at things differently, but admitted there's aspects she doesn't know about herself either. In fact, the two don't refer to each other as a married couple, but instead lifelong partners. And they also don't call each other wife and husband, which is just different than the normal societal norms. There is just so many online posts and compilations of reasons why the public thinks Jada is toxic and problematic, but that's a rabbit hole you can dig yourself into if you'd like. And for number two, we have separate lives. The two revealed, or should I say Jada revealed in her memoir, how her and Will have actually been living separate lives since 2016. She explains it's kind of like a divorce, but without the papers. And back in 2018, she hinted at this because she elaborated on the topic of divorce before admitting she wasn't mature enough to have one. And even said she would be less expensive for Will just to keep her around. They have taken breaks before, but it seems like this one has been the longest one yet as they have tried in the past to rebuild new rules and build a completely different relationship in an attempt of making it work between the two of them. And for a number one spot, we have forced marriage. Having cold feet before your wedding day is one thing, but being forced into your marriage is a whole other story. Jada has admitted on her talk show that the only reason why she married Will was because her mom, Adrian, basically forced her into it. Jada only went through with it after falling pregnant and her mom believed Jada getting married to Will was the right thing to do. 
Jada and her mother called the wedding horrible because Jada was so uncooperative because she simply didn't want to be married. She was also sick which further added to the situation. She admitted she cried all the way down the aisle and not the good kind of tears but the tears of sadness. Admitting this for the public to see also caused controversy because many thought it was unfair to put such big topics involving other people and their feelings right in front of everybody. I guess Will and Jada have officially confirmed their split and I wonder what the future holds for them. Maybe they'll work things out or maybe Young Gravy is gonna give Jada a call. Who knows? When one part of a pair is recently released from prison, there's bound to be some ups and downs and even some red flags and naturally a probable divorce. Now that's the root of Gypsy Rose Anderson who's going back to Blanchard as she separates from husband Ryan Anderson. So a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about Gypsy Rose Blanchard but one opinion everyone shared was that her husband had some horrendously bad vibes. So how'd she meet him? Well, the two came into contact via our first red flag. Ryan Anderson and a co-worker of his, both lonely and bored teachers, agreed to write to prisoners they'd seen in documentaries. Now Ryan's co-worker wrote to Joe Exotic and Ryan chose to write to Gypsy, who he thought to be cute. This is a pretty funny but equally eyebrow raising comment when you realize Ryan never saw any documentary of Gypsy, he'd only seen the sensational Hulu drama series The Act 2019, which was based on Gypsy's life and starred Joey King. I don't think Ryan really had a great chance with ladies outside of the prison, so writing Gypsy and having her be interested was probably thrilling for him. And that's because Ryan was very obviously seeking a so called captive audience. Now, the couple's relationship and subsequent marriage, initiated through correspondence while she was in prison, raises questions about the psychological profiles of those who seek relationships with prisoners. Psycho Therapist and author Siobhan Scott, with her expertise in psychology, unpacks this dynamic, noting that it often involves individuals with low self esteem who find a captive audience in prisoners. Now, Ryan, who worked with specifically disabled children as their teacher, expressed his attraction to Gypsy, someone vulnerable and also in need of leadership, similar to those he teaches in his classes, a fact that Scott finds disturbing, saying it's usually someone that has often very low self esteem. A prisoner represents a captive audience, suggesting that such relationships are generally not healthy as there's an imbalance. Siobhan points out that these individuals are often prone to fantasy, particularly a rescue fantasy, where they see themselves as a savior to the prisoner. Now this is eerily relevant to the whole Prince Charming fiasco that was addressed online when Gypsy and Ryan were on that YouTube show doing a newlywed games-esque question air, and the couple was asked what Disney princess best resembles Gypsy. She wrote for herself Anna from Frozen, while Ryan wrote Rapunzel from Tangled. Now people were quick to highlight that while Rapunzel and Anna were both locked away and found freedom from captivity, their major difference is one did it alongside a male partner and one did it without. Now Ryan's choice of Rapunzel rubbed many the wrong way because it seemed like he was adding himself into Gypsy's narrative, seeing himself as a Prince Charming, that her escape and journey would not have been the same without him. Siobhan Scott touches on the husband's perception of himself as Gypsy's Prince Charming and reminds us it is unrealistic and a red flag in any relationship as to quote, that's not how relationships work, highlighting the incoherence of their relationship's foundation. As if just Prince Charming wasn't enough, it's evident Ryan displayed a paternal role in this couple's relationship that doomed it from the start. Now let's be real, given her lack of real world skills and experience, Gypsy's husband immediately assumed a paternal role. Right off the bat, out of prison, Ryan got to show her how to use their laundry machine or dishwasher, where certain snacks are, where she's gonna put her clothes and shoes, and he taught her about driving, he taught her what stores are near the house, everything was about teaching Gypsy. Now while this would initially suit Gypsy, as she needs less and less aid, it wouldn't be as appealing. Consequently, that affection she'd have towards his parental role would become more irritation, she'd compare him to her mother and dubbed him controlling. But Ryan, a teacher by nature who evidently sought out a captive audience so he could have that educational and leader based powers, loses his control in the relationship relationship when that's the case. Now laying this context out, it's easy to see how this relationship descended into chaos. Now with all this teacher talk, we should cover how it was a red flag when he attention baited his own students. Ryan Anderson was a teacher when he started talking to Gypsy. As their relationship developed, it seemed Ryan couldn't help but beg for attention. Regardless, past students of his reported that he showed photos of her to his class and claimed that she was a nurse. Which I mean, come on, feels like an attempt to showboat. 
Ryan was dead aware that his students would recognize Gypsy because of how much media attention her case had gotten. The students of course did recognize her and once the word got around that Ryan was wagging around pictures of a girl who put a hit on her mom, then well, Ryan was asked to resign from his job. Which isn't a big deal now that Gypsy Rose is reeling in the money through interviews, many of which he's in. Which makes all that name usage make even more sense, because Ryan loves to drop Gypsy's name. Now following their prison wedding ceremony, Ryan said, I'm giddy because I'm married to someone as amazing as her. So many people chase Gypsy and want to be with her still, and I'm honored that she chose me. Ryan often refers to Gypsy as her full name rather than just Gypsy. Now married people don't typically refer to their husband or wife this way, it's almost like he wants the world to remember who she is, always, so he's associated with the Gypsy Rose Blanchard from the Hulu docudrama series, rather than just Gypsy the person. Now in my opinion this is intentional because he wants the world to know that he is associated with the Gypsy Rose Blanchard from this docudrama series, rather than just Gypsy the person. Now onto our last Ryan centric point, we can address how an annulment near Miss is a pretty big red flag in itself. Now before she was released from prison, Gypsy did a series of interviews for Lifetime's The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Now the final episode of the series highlights the days leading up to, as well as immediately following, her in prison wedding with Ryan. Now the pair tied the knot in June 2022, but just three months into their marriage, she was contemplating getting it annulled. Ryan and I had a disagreement about an ex-boyfriend of mine and his voice got raised to a decibel too loud and I fell apart, said Gypsy Rose. While Ryan said that during the fight, she told him, him, I consider us separated. Now Gypsy added that she told Ryan he was as controlling as her mother mid fight, which is what allegedly made him begin yelling to begin with. Yikes. Now according to Gypsy, it was her stepmother Christy who suggested she get the marriage annulled. For two weeks I didn't wear my wedding ring and I said some really mean things to him that I don't feel our relationship is going to work out, I don't feel like he was enough for me, she continued. Now this soon made headlines, but the pair decided to work through it and get couples therapy. Yeah, now Gypsy definitely has her bad moments in this pairing too, and I'd say her admitted loyalty tests are some. Now Gypsy admitted to putting Ryan through tests to make sure he was completely devoted to her, and it really stands out to me as a red flag. Testing romantic partners is a common behavior of narcissists in romantic relationships, as it is the fact that they keep many romantic interests in their orbit at once and pit them against each other to make them compete for affection. Now Ryan has openly said, so many people chase Gypsy and want to be with her still, and I'm honored that she chose me. Whilst expressing how he had to compete with her multiple exes at first, and even after they began dating. Although as prior mentioned, Gypsy has accused him of being controlling like her mother when he questioned her communication with her exes. I personally believe that this is a manipulative way to excuse not being honest about talking to Ken or her other ex, something she did shortly before marrying Ryan and lying about it to him. Now in the Lifetime series, this clearly rattled him and made him feel insecure about the state of their relationship and she even tried to blame it on him because he doesn't understand how she feels. This competition for affection is done to inflate the narcissist's ego by making them feel desired and ensures that the person they do choose feels like they are special and better than other potential partners and therefore decreases the likelihood that they will leave. Now ultimately, it's no big secret that one of Gypsy's red flags is that she lies a lot. To quote her, I've been raised to do what my mother taught me to do and those things aren't very good. She taught me to lie and I I don't want to lie, I want to be a good honest person. It's undeniable that Gypsy Rose was brought up to be insightful since her only role model in life was a massively narcissistic mother with other mental health concerns. Now in her various public appearances during and after her incarceration, with or without her husband, Gypsy Rose has admitted to lying to her dad and her stepmom, sister, her lawyers, the cops, and her husband. Now in the Lifetime series, she claims Ken left her because she wasn't a blonde bimbo, but in the Veil podcast, she claims that he was afraid of being associated with her. Now this is one of the many examples of rotating storylines. In the footage from her first police interrogation, Gypsy showed shock and despair over her mother's death. Wait, go back. No, no. I don't know what happened with my mom, she told the police officer, who doesn't seem to be buying the act as she asked them to tell her what happened. I didn't do anything. I don't know what happened with my mom. Now she knows how to play with people's emotions because Dee Dee forced her to do it for decades. Now it is of course a trauma response, but no amount of therapy can completely negate the learned behavior. What can, however, is a lot of work, accountability, dedication, and a second chance at life. Now that is how Gypsy sees this chapter, it's her second chance. And if that means ditching her
her husband, then so be it, as it was revealed in a statement shared on her private Facebook page. Now, the separation statement was obtained by people in Rolling Stone and goes as follows. People have been asking what's going on in my life, Gypsy reportedly wrote on Facebook. Unfortunately, my husband and I are going through a separation and I moved in with my parents' home down the bayou. I have the support of my family and friends to help guide me through this. I'm learning to listen to my heart. Right now, I need time to let myself find who I am. It's been a while since Gypsy announced that she was stepping away from social media following her rise in popularity after she was released from prison in December 2023, having hit the ground running a little too quickly after being released, as she put it. According to People, Gypsy deleted her social media accounts under the advisement of her parole officer so she won't get in trouble and go back to jail. Her last video prior to her public accounts deletion was an apology to those she offended and a statement of her intention to work hard on accountability. But despite knowing she messed up, she asked the world for a little grace as she navigates this second chance at life she's been given. She then promised that her actions would match my words. At number 10, we have Joe pressuring Sophie to attend industry events. It should be obvious if your partner expresses how they don't want to go somewhere, maybe don't force them to go. Well, according to multiple sources, According to multiple sources, Joe was pressuring Sophie to attend these industry events with him and even talked to other people, expressing how annoyed he was when she didn't attend. Sophie sometimes would give in and go to these events with Joe. However, she allegedly also expressed discomfort as she did not want to be seen in public and further be photographed. And if you already think Joe is crossing boundaries, you are absolutely right. But wait. There's even more. Joe allegedly did all of this after his wife gave birth to their second child together back in 2022. Poor Sophie probably just wanted to recover from childbirth, plus we all know how harsh the media can be, especially when it comes to appearances of women. If Joe was a good husband, not only would he have been supportive and understanding with Sophie's decision to stay at home, but he would also not be telling other people how he is frustrated with her not leaving the house. I mean, it's nobody's business but their own, and honestly, Sophie has every right to do whatever she wants. At the end of the day, Joe did call her a homebody and he was a social butterfly, so let her just be happy and enjoy her time at home. For number 9, we have Joe's alleged sexism and misogyny. After all the news of the divorce came out, it has been pretty clear speculations jump from one side to the other. However, many believe Joe actually has a past when it comes to flipping his problems and issues, turning the narrative onto the women in the relationship. In the past, Joe has always compared and contrasted how social he was and how Sophie may not be as outgoing as him as we said it before. So why is he now trying to make it seem like it's a bad thing Sophie's enjoying her time partying with her friends? I understand they have kids together now, but I'm sure if Joe was partying with his friends it wouldn't be seen as a big deal. Stereotypically, women stay at home while men go out and it seems like Joe can't get out of this 18th century's mindset. If he wanted Sophie to go out and leave the house more often, wouldn't this not bother him? Well, it seems like Joe has a tendency to flip things onto others and not treat them with respect. I mean, he did break up with Taylor Swift through a 27 second voicemail. Yup, big yikes. Well now it seems like he is continuing his track record once again. And for our number 8 spot, we have Joe not being supportive towards Sophie after the birth of their second child. Apparently, shortly after the birth of their second daughter back in 2022, Joe was ignorant and completely lacked emotional support towards his wife. Sophie did not want to leave the house as she was recovering from literally giving birth to his child. She also did not want to be photographed right after 9 long months which is totally understandable considering how public their lives are. And I'm sure as soon as Turner puts a foot out the door, many photos would instantly be taken of her because of the paparazzi. She has even addressed her her mental health struggles in the past and a big issue she found was being on camera at the age of 14 as the whole world picks her apart. And I'm sure it's still tough for Sophie to show up to any public appearance. In the past, this former couple has talked about how Joe and Sophie's relationship building as Joe apparently helped Sophie see herself for the true beauty she is. If Joe knew all the struggles Sophie has dealt with in the past, especially due to the judgement of her appearance, him not being supportive for her and her boundaries, especially right after birth is just crazy to me. For number 7, we have Joe's horrible PR stunt. Oh god, although this happened recently after the couple called it splits, this PR stunt just further highlighted toxicity from Jonas, which is why it had to be included in our top 10. If you haven't heard, Joe's first public appearance since the news about his divorce was with his two daughters and nanny as they were photographed on a patio while they seemed to be enjoying lunch. They not only sat outside, 
but Joe was also sitting facing the paparazzi, which seems a little bit interesting. The worst part is these photos were the first photographed, were the first photos of their two daughters the pair welcomed back in 2022 and 2020. Sophie, being a good and responsible mother, decided she didn't want her girls in the public eye in order to protect them from the media and for privacy reasons. Joe completely disregarded that and decided to use his daughters as a way to portray himself as a single, loving father of his two kids. Well, the internet quickly debunked that as it was clear what his true intentions were with this PR stunt, and it was to spite Sophie. I'm sure any responsible parent, even during a divorce, would put their children first, but I guess to Joe, getting back at his ex is more important than being a father who protects their kids and respects the mother of his kids' wishes. At number six, we have the lack of trust. I think most of us have heard the rumor circulating about the ring doorbell. Well, if you haven't heard of it yet, basically it has been said that Joe allegedly saw or heard Sophie do something on the ring camera that made him realize the relationship was not going to work out. The ring doorbell captures both audio and video footage that homeowners can view through an app and first of all Joe, why are you checking the ring footage? Many accuse Joseph of being a spy, especially because he's been with Sophie for four years. I'm sure they are able to trust each other, right? Without trust, is there even a relationship? Many fans are jumping into the conversation by tweeting and making memes about the situation for what Joe potentially heard that caused him to call it quit. Some fans say Joe heard Sophie say that Nick was her favorite Jonas brother and Camp Rock was not her favorite movie and so much more. The memes have gone endless. In our number five spot, we have his family pressures. Apparently, Joe and his family have been putting the ladies against each other as they continue to compare them. And those ladies are nobody except, of course, the gorgeous Sophie Turner and Priyanka Chopra. Priyanka is the wife to Jonas' younger brother, Nick. And because it has been said that Priyanka and Nick are both on the same page when it comes to settling down and raising a family they built together, whereas Joe wants to settle down and Sophie wants to continue living her life, especially since she allegedly feels like she's missed out on her youthful years having fun and instead have been working since she was an early teen. Due to this, it has been said that Joe and his family have been constantly comparing Priyanka with Sophie, which I'm sure does not further help the situation. We also have to keep in mind Priyanka and Sophie are two different people, which is why it's pretty obvious they're going to want different things. Sophie did enter the spotlight at 14, which makes sense on why she feels like she missed out on her teenage and early adult years. I just think it's toxic to have your partner's family tell you who you should be more like. But also, why isn't Joe standing up for Sophie? And for number four, we have the age gap. Although age gaps tend to be normal in relationships and aren't directly toxic, Joe did start seeing and dating Sophie when she was only 19 years old and he was 26. Seven years isn't too much of an age gap. However, considering the fact Sophie was 19, she was honestly quite young. This alone may have not been toxic, but the power imbalance can be inconsistent as Joe was almost in his late 20s and Sophie we just became a legal adult. We often see age gap relationships in Hollywood and not all of the relationships end the same way Joe and Sophie's did. However, considering these two were apparently on different pages, it seems like the seven year age gap started to affect them. Joe was ready to settle down with Sophie and there's two children, but Sophie still wants to enjoy her 20s while she can. She did get engaged to Joe when she was 21, married to him by 23, and even had their first daughter by 24. Because we know all this, no wonder Sophie feels like she's been missing out on her younger years. She did start acting at 14 and I'm sure it's hard to live a quote unquote normal life when you are as famous as she is. Whether the age gap has anything to do with the downfall of their marriage, I personally think the fact that they both currently want different things is not further helping. And for number three, we have the Jonas Injectables campaign. This one doesn't directly affect Sophie, but it does tell us a little bit more about Joe. Back in 2022, Joe did a campaign with a seemingly positive message about loving yourself. The advertisement was called Beauty on Your Terms. It was a way to find an alternative to face changing surgeries and procedures that we see many in the show business. Get. This ad, however, was promoting an injectable solution which, which is the competitor for Botox in order to smoothen and hide fine lines and wrinkles. So the whole message surrounding feeling beautiful, boosting your self esteem and to fit into mainstream beauty standards all stem from this product you inject. Which can be a little contradicting especially because of the campaign Jonas started in centered around feeling good in your own skin. And hey, there's nothing wrong with doing whatever you want to your face but it is maybe not the best move for this campaign directly as it takes 
takes away the message about feeling good being your own person and instead directing you into ways you can fit into Hollywood's obsession with staying young. Plus, Joe has a pretty large fan base with some young fans and whether that's his responsibility or not, that's up for discussion. And for number 2 we have the breakup right before their wedding. Yep, sounds pretty toxic to me. Well apparently right before the lovebirds decided to get married in 2019, they broke up for 24 hours due to both of them getting cold feet, which apparently is normal right before marriage as you are both about to make one of the biggest commitments of your life. But not only did Joe feel this way, Sophie felt the exact same way as well. Because of this, the two split for 24 hours before they quickly decided they could overcome their feelings of cold feet and did indeed want to get married. Although this is common, I think it could be a little toxic to jump straight into a breakup when they could have talked things out before concluding to the end of their relationship. I understand it can be difficult to act rationally in high stress or emotional times, but communication is key in a relationship. And I'm sure they could have both worked through whatever emotions both parties were feeling in order to make both of them feel secure and happy moving forwards. In our number one spot we have Sophie Turner's friendship with Joe Jonas's famous 12 time Grammy winning ex-girlfriend, no one else but Taylor Swift. I'm not really sure if this is toxic for Sophie or if there's more warning flags on Joe for this one. I mean Sophie has shown support for Taylor since 2021, showcasing her love for her music as she actively posts what she's listening to from Taylor's album. Furthermore, a song she has famously posted about in the past was Taylor's hit 2008 song Mr. Perfectly Fine which is speculated to be about Joe Jonas. We all know how Taylor and Joe's breakup didn't end with rainbows and sunshine so it is interesting to see a friendship spark between these two ladies. Good for them though because Joe does have a reputation for blaming all his issues on the women in the relationship he's had in the past, so for these two girls being unproblematic towards each other even when Sophie was dating Joe, it makes me really happy for them. As Joe and Sophie navigate their new chapters with their children, we hope they can learn from these moments and build a more positive future. We wish them both the best in their separate journeys. Number 10 The Facebook Live A video has recently resurfaced of Justin and Haley on Facebook Live in May of 2020. In the Clip Haley admitted to the constant comparisons that she gets to Selena Gomez, and she says they're overwhelming. Quote, the ways that I feel like people have made comparisons and just put me in a position where they've really made me feel like less of a woman, it's not easy. But while she's pouring her heart out on camera, Justin is not exactly being supportive. The whole time she's talking, he keeps a poker face and gazes blankly off camera. Now that people are re-watching the video almost three years later, they're pretty shocked by his lack of response. In fact, his facial expression is so vacant that some people joked that he looks like a cardboard cutout or a green screen projection. Fans felt that his body language was a major red flag for their relationship. Someone in the comments suggested that Justin was being hypnotized to sit there. Most people could agree that he genuinely looked like he would rather be anywhere else. So was this clip an indicator that their relationship is not that great behind the scenes or is everyone just reading too much into it? Number 9 Justin screaming at Haley. In July of 2021, the couple were in Las Vegas to celebrate Kendall Jenner's new tequila brand, 818 Tequila. After the night, a TikTok user posted a video of Justin and Haley leaving the club, with fans and bodyguards around them. In the video, they could be seen holding hands, but as they were walking down the halls of the hotel, Justin very clearly looked like he was yelling at her. The clip went viral on TikTok with more than 1.2 million views, and it drew concern from fans everywhere. From that point on, the comment section was filled with theories about why he was screaming at her, and many people put it down to a sign of toxic in their relationship. After all, who yells at their partner like that? Before it was deleted, fans seemed to turn on Justin for the way he was treating Haley. Although some came to his defense and claimed that he wasn't actually yelling at her out of anger, but maybe out of excitement. Sadly though, that was far from the only video that came out about them showing him losing control of his temper. Number 8 Running Away From Haley In September of 2021, there was a shocking video posted on Twitter, which showed Justin running away from paparazzi and fully leaving Haley while she falls on the ground. In the clip, he gets out of the car with his skateboard and just takes off without saying anything. At first, it looks like he's alone just doing his own thing, but one second later, Haley literally falls out of the car and looks flustered, especially at the fact that she got left behind. To make things so much worse, this all happened on a busy street, so plenty of people watched it. She then sprints after him, obviously trying to catch up, but Justin is already out of sight. The whole thing must have been incredibly humiliating for her, and that's exactly what the comments said. Someone wrote, I know this keeps her awake at night, and that's why you shouldn't chase men. However, fans were also very sympathetic to her situation, considering that a lot of people could relate to having a partner that just doesn't
doesn't care for you. One user wrote, as much as we may not like her, no female deserves to be treated like this by their husband. She deserves better regardless. Justin says don't touch me. Obviously every relationship is different and every couple has different boundaries with each other, but fans were still pretty shocked to see a video of Hailey making Justin physically uncomfortable with her touch. In the video they are doing a live stream of some kind. He's sitting down casually while she's standing behind him with her arms crossed. She then tries to be affectionate and put her arms around him, which he instantly reacts to. Justin becomes visibly annoyed and says, babe, I just, I can't. Don't touch me right now. At first, Haley cannot tell if he's being serious and she just keeps her arms there. He then says, just in general, that just happens sometimes. I just need some space. To be fair, he's trying to be nice about it and communicate with her honestly. But in terms of his body language, you can tell that he's not really loving the way he's being touched. A lot of people called out Haley for disrespecting his boundaries and making him stressed. But of course, there were also those fans who felt that this was just a sign that he straight up doesn't like her anymore because he keeps getting annoyed with every little thing that she does. Haley was a stalker. Recently, there's been evidence posted that proves the model was a hardcore Justin Bieber fan for years before they got together. In fact, she would often tweet about his relationship with Selena and how much she shipped them as a couple. In a deleted tweet from 2011, she wrote, I don't care what anyone says, but Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez together is the definition of a teenage dream. Of course, that must have been pretty embarrassing for her, but to be fair, she was only around 14 or 15 when she posted that. Soon after that, a damning video appeared online from 2012 that shows Haley lurking in the background while Justin met with fans. She was in a crowd trying to get close to him. This was obviously long before she was a part of his inner circle. They were first introduced in 2009, so at the time of the video they would have met before. But judging by that footage, Justin still treated her like just another fan. One of the most liked comments under that video says, she was the groupie with the most financial resources to keep stalking, and eventually came out on top. Money does by love indeed. The Apple Music interview. In the midst of the drama, fans have continually brought up an interview of Justin talking about the downsides of his relationship. Apparently he struggled after realizing that his marriage to Haley wouldn't instantly make him a better person. He said, it's a journey. I remember when I first got married, I hit a little bit of an emotional breakdown because I thought marriage was going to fix all of my problems and it didn't. He went on to say that he felt like a hypocrite because he wanted Haley to do something that he wasn't doing for himself. Although Justin was obviously speaking from the heart here, many fans were mocking the video by saying that he only feels that way because he's with the wrong person. Shortly after they tied the knot, Haley and Justin did an interview with Vogue, where they talked about going to a marriage counselor. Haley said, the thing is, marriage is very hard. That is a sentence that you should lead with. It's really effing hard, which is something that they could both agree on. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get divorced, but some would say it's not a good sign. Slams the door on Haley. In 2020, Justin got a ton of flack from fans in a paparazzi video that went viral. Despite claims that he is a gentleman, his behavior around his wife has been far from chivalrous. And that only refers to what's actually been caught on camera. In a shocking clip, the singer pulled up in a black chauffeured SUV. As he got out of the car, he looked visually annoyed as if he just had some kind of meltdown. Without looking back, he carelessly slams the door in Haley's face. She tragically follows him without any pushback and even tries to point him in the right direction. The only thing she said was, babe, I think this is the right way. Of course, a lot of people were sickened by the whole video because it really looked like a textbook toxic relationship. Seeing Haley be automatically apologetic after Justin clearly embarrassed her in front of everyone was triggering for a lot of viewers. One person wrote, she needs to wake up. If a man treats you like that, he doesn't love you. Another person commented, Ugh, if I was Haley, I would get a divorce and move out of the country. So it seems like people were encouraging her to break up. The argument on live. In a Facebook Live, Justin and Haley can be seen sitting on a couch answering questions about his Lyme disease diagnosis. They get asked whether or not he's scared about the diagnosis, and even though the question was clearly directed at Justin, Haley decides to answer instead. Midway through her response, he then cuts her off and says, she was asking me. What follows is a long silence, which eventually breaks into an awkward laugh. He then says, they're asking me because it's my Lyme disease. It's not your Lyme disease. In response, Haley says that she's 
the one who's been going to all his doctor's appointments with him. But Justin cuts her off again and says, listen here woman, which obviously was the worst thing he could have possibly said. After that, they decide to end the live stream, but not before Haley made a sarcastic comment about his attitude. At this point, it's pretty obvious there is a lot of tension between the two of them, which might have been exacerbated by Justin's health condition. At the time, he also had a serious case of mono, which he says was affecting his skin, brain function, and energy. The arranged marriage. In 2020, Justin sat down with Demi Lovato on The Ellen DeGeneres Show and talked about how she met his wife. He said, I think because she was raised Christian and they found out that, I think it was an arranged marriage. I'm pretty sure. Looking back now, it was definitely an arranged marriage. They set this whole thing up. He explains that since Haley was raised Christian, her dad Stephen Baldwin decided to introduce them because he thought that they would have similar values and believe the same thing. Justin said, it was definitely an arranged marriage now that I'm thinking about it. Goodness gracious. Even though Demi Lovato laughed off the idea, Justin just kept on repeating how he thought it was an arranged marriage. Of course, he was clearly joking, but a lot of fans have taken this interview as proof and just run with it. In fact, there's been a ton of videos posted where people tried to use this to explain how their marriage was a setup, and Justin was tricked. Their first meeting was all the way back in 2009, and it was actually captured on film. So everyone can judge for themselves whether or not they think it was arranged. Number one, allegations of cheating. Justin got together with Haley very quickly after he ended things with Selena in June of 2018. So ever since then, cheating rumors have followed the couple. For her part, Haley has adamantly denied this was the case. And she said that Selena and Justin weren't as serious as everyone thought when they got back together in 2018. She said, as a woman, I would never want to get into a relationship with someone and be engaged to them and be getting married to them and be thinking in the back of my mind, I wonder if that door was really closed. I know for a fact that the reason we were able to get back together was because it was very much completely closed. But Selena recently commented on a TikTok in a way that suggests that was not the whole truth. One of her fans posted a video saying, does anyone just feel really bad for Selena Gomez? Like, can you imagine going through a breakup so publicly with a guy that you were in love with for like seven years and then like two months later, he just marries someone? In response, she wrote, that made me cry, thank you. So even though Haley swears that there was no overlap whatsoever, the timeline has always been pretty shady. From slapping someone at the Grammys in the name of love, to cheating more than five times, and wearing vials of each other's blood, here's our list of the 10 celebrities in toxic relationships that will end badly. Starting off, we have Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. Everything I know about this couple has been against my own will, thanks to them being so openly honest about everything in their life. From Jada's entanglements and her past with Chris Rock, I think it's safe to say that the relationship of Will and Jada has set its sail. Now, after the Oscars incident, Jada even said, we haven't called each other husband and wife in a long time. She also revealed that she and Will had been separated for six years by that point. We're still figuring it out, we just got deep love for each other and we are going to figure out what that looks for us, she said. Up next is Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly have been a strange couple to say the least. They're known for their excessive PDA and wearing vials of each other's blood. Now, in 2000. 2023, they were on and off again, but they appear to be working through things. Now, in 2022, it was revealed that MGK was on the phone with Megan when he almost ended his own life. Now, there seems to be a lot of manipulation and codependency in this relationship, so when they do finally decide to end it permanently, it won't be good. Moving on to Justin and Haley Bieber. Justin and Haley got married in 2018, but was it really true love? Justin has claimed, jokingly, of course, that it was an arranged marriage. That's because Haley was raised Christian and he was raised the same way. Now, all I gotta say is yikes, because if you look at the evidence of how he was with Selena Gomez just two months before he and Haley got engaged, this makes sense. Then there's the fact that many people think that Justin is still in love with Selena. Now, regardless if he is or not, Haley is extremely jealous of Selena and it could end their marriage. Then there's Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. After rekindling their romance over two decades after calling off their initial engagement, Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck got married in July 2022. However, it appears that things haven't always gone well for Jennifer and Ben because they've been spotted fighting multiple times from paparazzi that was caught on camera. Now they're deemed Hollywood's most bad tempered couple. That just doesn't seem like it will work out. And also, we can't forget about Ben's infidelity in the past with other partners. It seems like this relationship is doomed. 
Now we have Cardi B and Offset. Now the pair secretly got married in September 2017, but their relationship hasn't been what it seems. Offset has been accused of cheating on Cardi at least three separate times. They've broken up, and every time Cardi gets back together with him. Now to make things more complicated, they have two children together. Now this could be why Cardi keeps going back to him, as she wants her kids to have their father in their life. Now most recently, on December 11th, 2023, Cardi confirmed that she was single, but on March 1st, it was revealed that Offset directed her music video that was released that day. So are they back together? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now let's talk about Kanye West and Bianca Sensori. On January 13th, 2023, TMZ reported that Kanye West and Bianca Sensori had secretly wed in a private ceremony. Many people online wonder about the legitimacy of this marriage as Bianca looks exactly like Kim Kardashian, his ex, and people are concerned for Bianca's well-being. Now Kanye appears to control everything that she wears, and the looks are questionable at best. Bianca, blink twice if you need help, has been a common comment on Instagram, while others have accused Kanye of dehumanizing his wife and exploiting her body for profit. Now there's also speculation that Bianca's friends have expressed concerns about her relationship with Kanye. Can Bianca leave the relationship if she wants to? We don't know, and that's scary. On to Prince William and Kate Middleton. On April 29th, 2011, Kate Middleton married Prince William. Now they currently have three children together, but things are going downhill for the couple. In Touch First broke the news that William may have cheated on Kate Middleton with Rose Hanbury. Apparently, the affair occurred when the Duchess of Cambridge was expecting Louis in 2018 and only came to light in 2019. Now it's also been reported that William has quite a temper and is known for throwing things and pushing people. Now, if they did get a divorce, all the royal family and its fans would be up in arms. Then there's Sam and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Sam and Aaron Taylor Johnson first met when Aaron auditioned for her film Nowhere Boy. Now Aaron got the role when he was 18 years old at the time, and Sam, then 42 years old, directed the film. Now after a year of dating, Sam and Aaron announced their engagement, and it's just gross because there's a 23 year age gap. She could honestly be his mother. Now Aaron has defended their relationship though, as in 2019, he said, When I met Sam, I'd already lived a life far beyond that of most of my contemporaries. I didn't relate to anyone my age. I just feel like we're on the same wavelength. Now, Sam feels the same way, and it's gross. Next up is Holly Bailey and DDG. Holly Bailey and DDG were first linked in January 2022, and things seemed to be going pretty well until February 2023, when DDG was accused of cheating on Holly with his ex girlfriend, Ruby Rose, after Rose claimed he had gifted Holly. Holly, one of her old shirts. But then rumors of problems in their relationship only increased in July after DDG dropped a song, Famous, in which he appeared to call out Holly, seemingly referring to Holly holding hands with her Little Mermaid co star, Jonah Hurricane, on the red carpet. You know I'm insecure, that's a no no, he raps. Yeah, that doesn't seem too healthy. And finally, we have Adam Levine and Bahati Prince Lou. In 2012, Adam Levine began dating Bahati Prince Lou and they married in 2014, and in September 2022, it was reported that they were expecting their third child together. But shortly after, Instagram model Sumner Stroh posted a TikTok claiming that she had an affair with Adam that lasted for about a year. Screenshots and video recordings were used as proof, and in one screenshot, Adam was seen asking for permission to use her first name for his unborn child. Then more women came forward saying they received flirty messages from the star. Shockingly, Bahati has stayed with him, but with him cheating so much, it wouldn't surprise me if he did it again. Well, that's all for our list of the 10 celebrities in toxic relationships that will end badly. All I gotta say is, I hope I am far, far away when these relationships implode. <laughs>